All right, I am with a couple of competitors here that are representing the B&B &B Farms racing teams. And there's quite a few of you, there's quite a few wagons. Why don't you introduce yourselves and uh, talk about yourselves a little Darryl bit. Daryl Burkholder. I'm Nova Burkholder. All right, and I understand both of you are driving in today's competition, possibly tomorrow too. Yes, I'm driving the Classic and one buckboard. I'll drive a buckboard and a mini land rush. All right, and how long have you two been involved in this sport? Uh, this will be my 24th year. Wow, so you've got lots of experience. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Any uh, wild stories? Uh, and tell us what you're looking forward to this weekend. Well, this is the second go around of the Triple Crown, and uh, we won the first one, so we're hoping to win it this weekend to go to the third one. All right, and then hopefully wind up in Clinton. Yep, hopefully. All we right. Won, we won Clinton two years ago. Okay. And buckboard in 2012. Wow, excellent. And what about yourself? Have you got any ribbons, trophies, belt buckles? I don't know um, what awards I've are given away. I've got belt buckles. Um, the year I rookied in, I made it in the runoff with my 46s, so I was pretty proud of that. Great, great. All right, now there's quite a few horses lined up here. Uh, would you like to talk a little bit about the horses that you two will be running? Um, I'll be running these two 46s. They'll be in the mini classic. Oh, okay, that's over there by the flatbed. Yeah, it's right here, this red one and that black one. Oh, okay, yeah. gotcha. Those two will be in my mini classic. All right. And then this one and this one will be my buckboard team. Okay. So is there anything special about them? Have they been uh, bred and especially trained? Um, uh, lots of training, and this one here, he won the Nationals in Clinton with another team All right. about three years ago. Okay. Well, I wouldn't think that the 56s would be American Quarter Horses. No, they're, uh, uh, they're pony crosses. Okay. Uh, this Palomino pony behind her is a quarter horse pony cross that we won with in 2012. Okay. okay. And the bay pony with the turquoise holders by the tree is the other one we won with in 2012. Okay. Do you find that American quarter horses seem to be more suited for this type of course? <laughs> now, the track itself looks to be pretty long. You would think that maybe going with thoroughbreds would. I guess uh, that's everybody's opinion, but we run quarter horses. I've never had luck with thoroughbreds. A lot of people do run thoroughbreds. Yes. Uh, the way we condition them, thoroughbreds never held up for us. And generally you don't see them being used a whole lot as draft horses. No. Right. I mean, we can pleasure drive ours or yes. uh, we work ours six days a week, one day off. Wow. So they're pretty used to the type of the work that they are uh, asked, being asked to do. Yeah, this here is pretty easy for them for what they do at home. <laughs> is that right? What yeah. do they do at home? Uh, we pull a sled, we got a mile track, and we try to get them up pulling that sled a mile. I see. And the days that they're not off, they're leading six mile. They're going six miles just on a leader. Wow. Uh, that's just kind of what we've been doing, and that's kind of kept us competitive. Okay. Now, we've had quite a bit of rain. Some of the area out here is a tad bit swampy, you might say. The track looks in fair condition itself but even during the uh, barrel racing events. Uh, before we got the rain, the heavy rain, it was still slippery enough out there where some of the horses lost their footing around one of the bales. Is that going to be a problem in today's races? It don't seem, in my opinion, don't seem like the team slip as much as like the outriding horses. That's where you'll get the slippies. The teams seem to hold their own. Yes, yes. And you know, that's something that I failed to mention in the other interviews that I was doing. Uh, the wagons are required to have two people on the wagon, correct? Yes, yeah, so a driver and a cook and to have an outrider. And then an outrider. Yes. yes. What is the purpose of the outrider? Uh, he throws the stove in and it's got to pass you and beat you to the finish line. Okay. This is one of the wagons that will be competing today and tomorrow. and. 
It looks like a buckboard, but it looks to be quite a bit smaller. Yes, it's a landlord's wagon, like a mini classic. Uh, it's got to weigh 300 pounds. 300 pounds, and okay. They'll have 46 inch ponies on here. All right. And you will be driving this one? Yes. Okay. Your double tree here looks to be uh, custom manufactured. Yeah, about all the wagons are custom made. The, the tongues are. Okay. Uh, very seldom people use, well, I've never seen anybody use wood, usually aluminum or uh, steel. Yes, make it as light as possible. Yeah. Now, in the design of this wagon, I see it also uses a uh, mesh floor, which uh, certainly lightens the wagon up yeah, quite a bit. Are I'm, there other I'm, engineering aspects that has gone into this wagon uh, that has been learned from your many years of extensive racing competition? Uh, not really. Uh, just you want to keep it as close to the 300 pounds you can. Okay. And, you know, lighter the better. <laughs> yes. That's the reason it's got a mush floor in it. Just, uh, you know, if you put a wooden floor in it, it'd add weight. Right. And you're using PVC tubing, For I guess, the, uh, yeah. as the bows on your canopy there. Now, is the canopy required? Uh, yeah, on the on the classic and the land rush, it's required. The buckboards just have a sign. Okay. So we've covered weight and the look of it, and uh, these also have wooden wheels with the steel rims. Yes. Uh, I guess those are all requirements for them for this class as well. Yes. Okay. So pretty much similar uh, with these wagons over here, with the exception that I believe in the back where that fella is uh, leaning over it right now. Yeah. That is a buckboard, I would presume. That's the buckboard you run with 52 inch ponies. Okay. And that's a 500 pound weight yeah, limit, so I believe. Gotta, it's got to weigh 500 pounds. Okay. And then this wagon to the left of there, I would say that that's a classic because it does have, no, it doesn't have wooden it, spoke rim. It wheels. does, it does, it is a classic and you can run steel or wooden wheels. Uh, we have a wooden wheel wagon at home that we run at Clinton. We bought this and we take to the, it's just easier to get around for All us. All right. All right. You know, we travel, well, to come to this race was 833 miles. Yes. Now, what is the major difference between using the wooden wheels and the metal wheels, especially with a com competition point of view? Uh, I, I don't really know. The, the taller the wheel is, you know, I think it's easier to turn. Our wheels at home are a lot bigger. This one here pulls a little bit harder. The wheels are a little bit wider, so you're just covering more ground. Yes. Uh, other than that, I guess it's just anybody's preference. Is there any difference in weight and also in durability? Because uh, there uh, are accidents that happen yeah, every uh, once in a while. The steel uh, wheels, they won't break. The wooden wheels, that's one reason we don't run as much anymore because they will break if you... Yes, you and know, humidity affects or, them as well. What's that? The, hum the air... Uh, being humid uh, yeah, or really dry, stuff, that yeah. can affect the wheels. Like if yeah, you were to go get it out, too dry, to, they'll get loose. Yes, you go. I was going to say if you go out to like a place like Chandler, Arizona, where it's going to be uh, really dry, uh, might have a problem with your spokes being loosened up because they lose the moisture in yeah, the wood. Yeah, I'd say so. Okay. Well, are there any other wagons that are uh, in the team? that are a little bit different? Uh, uh, no, the buckboards and the lane rushes all look about okay, the same. Okay, okay. Uh, talked to one of the competitors and she's gonna be driving something that looks like an animal uh, powered or drawn <laughs> go-kart. Yeah, <laughs> uh, that's, uh, they, they call that the beat the Jeep. Uh, it's just something they do here, different. Okay, all right. Yeah, real low, yeah, real, real small low. wheels. <laughs> Yeah, it's pretty okay. fun to watch. All right. Well, is there anything else about this sport? And also the What About Bob uh, celebration competition itself that uh, you think the people should know? 
I'm trying to educate my viewers out here as well as myself. Some of the <laughs> questions I ask are to educate myself so I do a better job of passing that along. And then I don't ask such stupid questions next time I come to one of these things. I don't know. <laughs> we drive 15 hours to come to this race because we enjoy it so much. Right, yeah, just, because you guys are out of Indiana. Yeah, what we're part? out of Indiana. Uh, uh, Mark come to our race. We put a first race on last year, and Mark drove up there and come. And, okay. And, you know, we just try to support everybody and come to their race. They come to ours. And just, you know, you're not winning any big money. You're just meeting friends and having right. fun. Right. Okay. Are you planning on having, having an annual race up in Indiana? Yes, now? we're having one uh, the end of July, the 28th, 29th, and the 30th. This okay. will be our second one. I see. And you kind of plan to keep that schedule in the future, maybe? Yeah, we plan on it. Um, All right. Know, if it works out and everybody keeps liking and comes. Okay. Well, I've been uh, figuring out where my travel schedule is going to take me this year. I know I'm going to be going up through Kansas, North, uh, South Dakota, North Dakota, and then kind of headed west after that because I uh, really wasn't ha wanting to spend too much time <laughs> in the east. Yeah. <laughs> I have uh, worked in the Chicago area during the summertime. And uh, even though I was living in Florida, uh, I was still dreading that really humid air, <laughs> which we have today. Right, yes. I think we're up in the 90% humidity yes. today. So, uh, all right, well, I'm um, keep that in mind. And uh, I've also now got it on film. So I have a better idea of how to set next year's schedule. All right, thank you. All right, well, thank you very much.